In May 2025, during the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix at Imola, something very unusual happened. On the main straights, Charles Leclerc suddenly started holding his helmet with his hand. Over the team radio, he complained, helmet lift is horrible. But what exactly went wrong? And how can a Formula 1 helmet, a piece of equipment designed for ultimate safety, become a source of such a serious issue? To understand that, we need to break down not only what happened to Leclerc that day, but also how helmet aerodynamics work. First and foremost, helmets are absolutely important for driver safety. They protect against injuries in the event of crash. But in modern Formula 1, helmets are more than just a safety feature. They have become part of each driver's identity. A personal brand symbolizes three unique designs and colors. Beyond aesthetics, helmets also include aerodynamic features. Just like the front wing or diffuser on a car, the helmet interacts with airflow. That is why drivers and teams work with helmet manufacturers to customize aero kit, spoilers and even cooling channels. And here's where things get interesting, not all helmets are designed the same way. For instance, take a look at the Nika Hulkenberg's helmet, which features a sharp aggressive rear spoiler. Now compare that with Alex Albon's helmet, which has completely smooth rear section with no aero elements at all. Both are valid designs, but they save different aerodynamic purposes depending on the driver and the car setup. To really understand Leclerc's issue, we need to analyze the key components of modern Formula 1 helmet. Let's start with Chin Spoiler, a small aerodynamic piece under the chin area. It redirects air flow downward, ensuring clean air enters the cockpit instead of turbulent chaotic flow. Air inlets, usually placed on the top. These direct airflow into the helmet interior, keeping the driver cool and ensuring fresh oxygen exchange. And lastly, rear spoiler, perhaps the most crucial part for this story. The rear spoiler prevents early airflow separation, reducing turbulence behind the helmet. Without it, a large low pressure wake forms, which can pull the helmet backward and destabilize the driver. All combined, these aero features transform a bubble shaped helmet into mini aero package. At very high speeds, an F1 helmet can actually behave like an airfoil. The rounded top surface acts as airflow, creating a lower pressure region above the helmet. This generates lift, the same physical principle that makes airplanes fly. But for an F1 driver, lift is a nightmare. Instead of stability, the helmet gets sucked upward. To counterattack this, rear spoilers are used to push airflow downward and restore balance. Even small adjustments to these spoilers can make a massive difference in comfort and stability. Right, let's return to Charles Leclerc case. He uses helmets manufactured by Bell, a company trusted by many F1 drivers. His helmet includes both a chin spoiler and a straight rear spoiler. Under normal conditions, this should have provided approximately enough stability. But during the first sector at Imola, a section dominated by long high-speed straights, Leclerc's helmet began to lift violently. The reason? At such extreme speeds, the airflow above his helmet accelerated so much that the lift forced overcame the spoiler's ability. And the Ferrari engineers quickly investigated and tried to fix that. First, mechanics were seen holding a helmet with slightly different rear wing element. Perhaps a sharper, more aggressive spoiler would generate more downforce on the helmet balancing out the lift. Similar concept is visible on Carlos Sainz's helmet, which has a sharper rear edge. After that, they installed a larger cockpit screen, just before the driver's helmet line. It deflects dirty turbulent air produced by the wings, suspension and halo away from the driver's helmet. At Imola, Leclerc's screen was too small, allowing turbulent air to hit his helmet directly. Ferrari installed a larger version to clean up the airflow before it reached Charles' helmet. But this isn't unusual in F1. Different drivers on different circuits use front screens. For example, Lando Norris has used one at Spa and Max Verstappen also used it in Japan. Ok, but if spoilers are so important, why do some drivers like Alex Albon run helmets without them? The answer lies in the balance between personal preferences and car setup. There are few reasons. Starting with neck strength. Drivers are athletes, but genetics matter. 
Some have stronger neck, which makes them less sensitive to the helmet lift. And car setup is also vital. The position of the front wing, nose height and even suspension setup can completely change how air flows toward the cockpit. A setup that produces a clean flow for one driver might create turbulence for another. To prove this, look at the Lewis Hamilton's cockpit during the same Imola practice session. His helmet design is almost identical to Leclerc's, and he ran with no cockpit windscreen. Yet, Hamilton reported no issues. The difference? Likely his front section setup directed airflow more efficiently compared to the Charles one. Perma 1 is a sport of millimeters and milliseconds. Every component from the front wing end plates to the driver's helmet spoiler affects performance. That's why teams employ hundreds of aeronomists, safety experts and wind tunnel engineers. A helmet that works perfectly in Monaco might struggle at Imola. A setup that suits Hamilton might destabilize Leclerc. And at the end of the day, these colorful helmets aren't just for looks. They are aerodynamic tools, safety devices and personal emblems all rolled into one. And as we saw at Imola, sometimes they can even become the deciding factor between control and chaos. If you'd like to experiment with your own helmet or car setup, head to osrlab.com. There you can request a custom aerodynamic testing for your project. Because as Formula 1 proves, aerodynamics matter everywhere. If you have enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe since it really helps the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in next era analysis.